And now, just like the series portion, we're going to do what I've modeled of this as well, besides just these two. So now, um, we have the stand members, also known as bassoon and oboe. They also cost a pitch. Now, they transport the same, except for one thing. They use a different clef. So, because bassoons play a bass clef while oboes play a treble. So yeah, you can see how straight the oboe is. Yeah, as straight as possible. Bassoon, well, it's mostly straight, but there's only three bends. Two of them are here, and one is down there. And now I'll show you my members later. So the next two members will be contra bassoon and bass oboe. Now, these two over here on the right, they sound like a little written. And notice how, unlike the number soon, how the bell is straight and may also become material as the body, the cut of soon is not the case. It's pretty much different between a B flat clan and a bass clan with the construction of the bell. Same thing with these two as well. Now, cut bassoons actually have a modified alto saxophone bell. And as for the bass oboe, well, the bell is quite different than no one, so no one has this concave flare, similar to clarinets. Well, oboes, I mean, bass oboes, a lot of English horns, you see it's a big bullshit right here. It's kind of like this, but that one's not as severe as that. And it's pretty straight, except for the bulk here, it's kind of like that. And I see more later. The next two are leaves. So now we have a sub soon that Richard Bowe wants to make, and I hope he does. Walk alone country soon. You can see how big it is. And then we have an instrument that doesn't exist, and if it does, it's pretty much either extinct or it's unplayable. We have a country based oboe. Now this is the same pitch as this bassoon. It looks bigger, but they're about the same size if you think about it. The, like the two that is. And even though they're the same pitch, at least the same round low note, this is a bigger bell than that. And yes, so these two right here on the very right, these two sound too hard to written. Now, unfortunately, both of those don't exist right now, like I mentioned earlier, but, well, unless the O one does. So now you can see the F version of Lee's 3. So instead of starting from lowest to highest with a second A key like this single beats, I'm starting from highest to lowest just because both pairs currently exist. So anyways, the one on the left is a tenor rune, incorrectly called mini bassoon. Why is it incorrect? Well, because it's a charged term and it's just not something you should ever use for official charged instruments. But anyways, so this one's rare, but it still exists. And the one on the right is a piccolo oboe. Probably better be called Sopranino Oboe because of relative terms, but it's called Piccolo because it's the smallest one that exists. So now you can see all the lower versions. So the next ones over here on the left is something that used to exist but doesn't anymore, a semi bassoon. But when it first existed, or when it existed, it was not shaped like this, it's shaped more like the one that's next to it, as in the tenor rune or the bassoon, if you want to go towards after space off of. In fact, a kind of bassoon is really shaped like the bassoon as well. But unlike the kind of bassoon, which is made modern and still exists, the semi kind of bassoon went extinct. So here's the modern equivalent of it. And the one on the right, that's an English horn. Unlike semi kind of bassoon, this one's a lot more common. In fact, it's one of the most common elbows in the world, and you know, it definitely exists because you sometimes hear it in music and stuff. One mark low is these two right here. So, on the left, this big one is a semi sub bassoon. Why the low than a semi bassoon? But, another thing is, it's like Richard's instrument, but it's an F set of C. And, so, yeah, just like how this looks like a small bassoon, this is a smaller sub bassoon. And the one on the right, this one right here, is a contra alto oboe. Why contra alto? Because that's most likely a name for the instrument if it would exist. In fact, it's a term that is also used for clarinets and flutes, so it works here too. And they don't exist though either, I'm not sure why. They may be a few contra basses, but not any contra altos. And this one might also be called a bass English horn because I'll glow in this. And that's it for those.
So the name of all 12 of these instruments, you know, six for each um, family. So you can see that um, the two bass bassoons have the word subcontra bassoon in it, but the F1 is a semi, which is in front. Same with the higher two, but there's no sub in the words. And then you have the bassoon tenorune, which is the most straight. And then with the oboes, you have contra bass and contra alto oboes, also known as contra oboes. And then you have bass oboe and English horn, which for some reason is called that instead of alto oboe, which is, I don't know why they did that. And then you have the smallest two, which is the most straight and has, well, it's the most different. You have this, the C oboe and the piccolo oboe. And here's the funny thing. So, even though it's called a bassoon, it actually has a voice between tenor and baritone, which I call meso baritone. And then a soon has a voice between bass and sub bass. Sub soon has a voice between contra bass and sub contra bass. And then uh, tenor room has a voice between tenor and alto. And then the semi soon has a voice between baritone and bass. And then the semi sub soon has a voice between contra bass and sub bass. As for the oboes, the smallest one, actually, let's go to no one first. The no oboe, even though it's called a soprano, it, it actually has a sopranian voice. With the F1 being a soprillo, English horn is a soprano, bass oboe is an alto, contra alto oboe is a tenor, and the contra bass oboe is a baritone. Just like a bass clarinet and a baritone saxophone and a contra bass flute. The reason why I gave those names the way they are is because that's what voice I hear when I hear those instruments, at least some of them. The rest is done by just basic math skills and voice type. And now, i show you the straight ones. But before we get to that, I'm going to show you what the reads look like of the same size members. So you can see how different they are with the same size. So now we have the one on the left is a contra bass oboe read, and the one on the right is a bassoon read, no one. You can see that they are quite different in shape. Just like what I showed you for real, with the English horn and contra bassoon and the bassoon and oboe. So now we have the same pitch members, only pitch as in its lowest range and stuff. So yeah, so if you look closely, the tops are pretty much the same width, but the bottom is different. Let's rotate so you can see it better. And now if I do this, Oops. Well, here, let's get this grass out of the way. And now, lastly, the tops are matching. You can see that, well, you can barely see that the top is going to be from the contrabass oboe and the bassoon. The top is a little lower, so you can see they're the same width. So, yes, and that's how the oboe's bassoon is compared in shape. And now, I'll show you what it looks like when straight. So you can see how the larger oboes look like an English horn if the bulk is straight. And for the bassoons, well, they look kind of funny and weird because... Actually, all bassoons are weird in this way. Even the normal bassoon and tenorune look weird. And you can see all those gray metal things that are used, I think, joints for the bends. Yeah, you can see all those now. And now I'll show you what it looks like when I zoom out enough. And look how much longer the sub bassoon is. In fact, that instrument is so long, I zoom out all the way until you can see the hexagon platform that all the instruments are on. In fact, you can barely see some. In fact, the sub bassoon, that's the very tip. And then that's the bell for it. And then you can barely see the piccolo oboe. It's so small than that sub bassoon, it's kind of funny. And now, you see all, let's see, I had four more than 12, so that was all 16 instruments. So, the reason why I only added two more lower oboes and two more higher bassoons because right now the octave bassoon of the four is the one that couldn't exist. And it has F kind of part, the octave tenor moon, the little small one right over here. And then for these two big oboes, so the biggest one is an octave country bass, and the second bass is a sub country bass in F. So, these two obviously don't exist at all, but if they did, they are probably like this. I add that just so that we keep that balance within the Dory instruments. So that's it for the computer recording of this video. Except for one thing, that's the 16 instruments, 
but viewed in perspective to orthographic projection. And also, unlike the singeries where you have B flat E flat members, this is instead C and F members a whole tone higher 